Math 2414, Partial Fractions, Video 8, Case 3, Unique Quadratic Factors. So far, all of the partial fraction decompositions we've been doing had linear factors, factors whose degree was 1. Uh, they may have had exponents on the factor, such as the x minus 1 in parentheses squared from the previous example. The factor itself only had an x possibly with a coefficient in front and a constant term added on the end. Um, so how do we handle this? Well, with a pretty simple statement. If a rational function has an irreducible, which means unfactorable, quadratic factor of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, so a degree two factor, if you will, that can't be factored further then the partial fraction decomposition will have a partial fraction of the form. You will have a fraction with that quadratic denominator. But this time the numerator, instead of being a constant, will be a linear numerator. So something of the form capital AX. B. So it it won't just be a constant. It could have a constant or it could have an X term or it can have both. For example, let's consider the rational expression or the rational function 2X squared minus X plus four over X times X squared plus four. It is worth noting that this does satisfy the degree requirement. The degree on the numerator is two, but the degree on the denominator is three, which can easily be seen by distributing the X or more generically, when you have a product of polynomials, the degree is the sum of the degrees of the factors. So in this case, one plus two is three. This denominator has two factors, a linear factor, the x, and a quadratic factor, the x squared plus four. The x squared plus four is irreducible. A lot of people think x squared plus four will factor into something, but if you're limited to real numbers, you'll never make it work because you need two numbers that would multiply to give four, so like two and two are negative two and negative two, or one and four, four and one, one and four or negative one or negative four. But when you multiply them out, you'll always get an X term in the middle. So relative to the real numbers, X squared plus four is prime. I say that because if we allow complex numbers, then technically everything is factorable. We're not gonna go there right now. All right. We already know what to do with the linear factor. The linear factor is X and it's gonna get a partial fraction with a constant numerator. And the irreducible quadratic factor is X squared plus four. So it would get a factor that is a linear numerator. And since we've already used B, then we'll call this linear numerator, excuse me, since we've already used A, then we'll call this linear numerator BX plus C. Just remember, for the quadratic partial fractions, the numerators can have X terms and they can also have constant terms. Why don't we take this to the next page and see if we can see the behaviors. You may be wondering why I left all that space between the first fraction and the plus sign. Well, because the next thing I'm gonna do is clear out the fractions by multiplying by the least common denominator, which is the guy on the left, and I wanted to leave room for it. Let's multiply the right side by x times x squared plus 4. And also the left side. The left side is going to be pretty predictable. Because we're multiplying everything by the left side's denominator, then that's just going to cancel. So you don't even need to mess with that. You just need to know what's going to happen. 2x squared minus x plus 4. Equals on the first fraction. X is canceled, and that leaves an A times X squared plus four. And on the second fraction, the B's cancel, and that's going to leave us, sorry, on the second fraction, the X squared plus four is canceled, and that's going to leave us BX plus C times X. All right, let's play the pick numbers to put in for X game. Now, the problem here is we have three constants that we don't know, A, B, and C, and we only have two factors. And even worse, the irreducible quadratic factor 
x squared plus four is never going to equal zero, no matter what value we substitute for the x. Well, no matter what real value we would substitute for the x. However, I can make this factor equal to zero by letting x equal zero. So let's start there. Excuse me, let x equal zero. On the left side, that's gonna collapse down to four. When I put zero for x here, I'll get 4a. And when I put zero for x over here, that x is gonna zero out the entire add end, so it's gone. <coughs> so I'll get four equals 4a, and this implies a is equal to one. But we run out of good x's that will make things disappear. So now we just gotta start picking some other x's and see what we can make out of this. There's no need to get crazy. Let's try something simple like letting x equal to one. If we let x equal to one here, and I'm sorry, but that exponent here is driving me crazy. It looked like a seven, I tried to make it a two, and now it looked like a z. That's a little bit better. All right, so if we let x equal to one on the left side of the equation, let me clear out some stuff here. We let x equal to one on the left side of the equation right here. We get two minus one plus four, which is five. And if we let x equal one here, we get one squared plus four is five. Five times a is five a. But what do we get if we let x equal one over here? We get b plus c times one, which is b plus c. Now the problem with this is we've got two unknowns. We know what the a is. We know a is equal to one. So we can go ahead and put that in for the, for the, uh, for the a, and we'll get five equals five plus b plus c. And if we subtract five from both sides, this implies b plus c is equal to zero. Or equivalently, b equals negative c or c equals negative b. In fact, let's go ahead and, and write that implication, which implies that b is equal to negative c. Now, does that help us? No, we don't know b or c, but now if we know one, we know the other pick another value for x. Let's let x equal two. And really your choice of x's here are irrelevant. You're gonna get the same values for a, b, and c regardless. If we let x equal to two, then on the left side of the equation, over here, we'll get two times two squared minus two plus four. Two times two squared is two times four, which is eight. Eight minus two is six, six plus four is 10. We should get 10 over there. And if we substitute two here, we get two squared is four, four plus four is eight, we get eight a plus, and if we put in two for the x here, it's in two places, we get two b plus c times two. But we got several things we can do here. We can distribute the two, get eight a plus four b plus two c. And now let's see what this implies. We know a equals one, so we can put that in right now and get 10 equals eight plus, we know b equals negative c. So we can change the b to a negative c, get four times negative c plus two times c. And now we just have an equation involving only c's. Let's see what this implies. We subtract two from both sides, we get two, e I'm sorry, subtract eight from both sides, we get two. If we combine the C terms, negative 4C and positive 2C, negative 2C. And this implies that C is equal to negative 1. But we know B is equal to the opposite of C, so this implies B. So it's a little bit more crazy when you have irreducible quadratic factors because there's no X's that will make them disappear. No real X's that will make them disappear. No rational X's that will make them disappear. I keep trying to say the correct words in case there's a nitpicky mathematician watching this. But we do have a equals one, and eventually we got c equals negative one, and we got b equals one. So that was a little tricky. You may want to watch that again and play it out on your own. But just choose values for x that are convenient. You get nice answers like a equals one. And if you run out of convenient x's, you just pick other x's and, and then make do with whatever you get. All right, so anyway, we got a equals one, b equals one, c equals negative one. That means the following.
our partial fraction decomposition for the original fraction was a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 4. But we know the values of a, b, and c now, so we can just substitute them. Get a drink of water. a over x becomes 1 over x plus bx plus c becomes 1x minus 1, or more succinctly, x minus 1. We have successfully decomposed the original fraction into the sum of its partial fractions. As you can see, a quadratic factor does make things a lot more, I don't want to say more complicated, but more drawn out. So if you run into, the, into one of them, don't panic, just stay focused and you'll be